Okay. Well, it looks like our recording has started, so I will get us going. Hi, hello, and good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Business Liaison Librarian Webinar. My name is George Bergstrom. I'm the Southwest Regional Coordinator from the Indiana State Library's Professional Development Office. I'll be host and question moderator today. Our presenter this morning is Annette Bochnek. Uh, I'd like to start off the webinar with a few quick announcements to register for other upcoming webinars available from the Professional Development Office. Please see the Indiana State Library's events calendar, which can be found on our website at www.in.gov library. For a full list of our current in-person training menu, please see our continuing education website. The Indiana State Library has many ways to st uh, try to stay connected to the library staff across the state. For weekly updates on upcoming trainings and to learn more about what's happening in libraries across the state, please subscribe to our weekly email e-newsletter, The Wednesday Word. We also offer a blog which provides information about the Indiana State Collection, interviews spotlights on library staff from across the state, and information about upcoming events at the Indiana State Library. If you have questions during today's webinar, just type in the chat box on the upper left side of the screen. I'll try to be watching that and get your question and name to the presenter as soon as there's a good opportunity. There should also be time near the end for questions. Today's session is one hour, so you'll get one LEU for today. I'll be sending those out sometime in the next few weeks along with the link to the recording in case you want to refer to it in the future. If at any point during the webinar you experience any sound issues, please see the sound issues box just below the chat box on the left side of the screen. If there's a global sound issue, we will announce it in the chat pod. And if you're unable to resolve the sound issue you're experiencing, we are recording the meeting and you can watch it offline after it has ended. Again, if there's a global sound issue, we will make the announcement in the chat box. So without further ado, I'd like to now turn the presentation over to Annette Bochnek. Good morning. Thank you so much for the introduction. My name is Dr. Annette Bohenek. I am the business liaison librarian at Barrington Area Library, which is located uh, just north of Chicago in Barrington, Illinois. Uh, so I'm very happy to be able to speak with you about uh, how I experience business liaison librarianship in my setting, uh, which happens to be within the public library setting, and uh, just the various aspects that my position uh, offers me. So without further ado, then we'll go ahead and progress through this presentation. Uh, so just a quick overview of the different points that I'll be addressing here. I'll talk to you a bit about uh, just again how I experience business librarianship uh, within the public library sphere since of course we have these different aspects of librarianship, uh, academic, archives, so on, uh, but this is how, um, how I've been working through uh, being a business librarian in the public library. Uh, the different library services that are offered here at Barrington Area Library uh, in addition to the different business and job services search databases that are also at our disposal out here. Uh, and I'll talk to you a bit about some of the large scale events that I've been coordinating here uh, while I've been in this role and share some information about how I keep in touch with patrons and how we can keep in touch should you have further questions for me. Uh, so first off, um, we'll talk a bit about business librarianship within the public library. So uh, I mentioned briefly Barrington Area Library is located in uh, the northern suburbs, uh, just north of Chicago. Um, we're open basically every day except for holidays. And I'm sure a lot of the different types of resources you see that we offer are probably echoed within your own institutions as well. Um, we certainly have our own catalog and databases. I'm sure we'll have some differences in some of the databases that we have here versus within uh, your institutions, but certainly some crossover, I, I would think. Uh, we also offer patrons the option to set up their own library accounts through our library website so they can manage their account, handle their renewals, placeholds, that sort of thing. And uh, in addition to our physical collection, we also have quite a range of downloadable or electronic media, including ebooks, audiobooks, magazines, music, movies, so on. And it's constantly uh, something that's in flux as different apps come about that our library will subscribe to, uh, or alternatively, some apps that our library will let go of along the way as well. 
so as far as being a business librarian out here, um, these are kind of this, the key objectives within my role. So uh, when I reflect upon my position, essentially um, some components that really stand out to me um, are as follows. So just uh, this task to really connect the business community to the library. Uh, so essentially I work to build relationships on behalf of the library and really connect people uh, to the resources that they need uh, in order for their business to grow, um, for them to grow as professionals uh, as well. Uh, and I also inspire business use of library resources. Um, so I want to educate certainly different businesses, business owners, employees about what resources we have to offer them that again could be beneficial to them and really work alongside businesses to ensure growth, whether it's through uh, maybe like large group programs or one-on-one -on -one appointments, uh, just meeting with businesses and individuals within the community fairly regularly and again growing and cultivating that relationship. Uh, assisting customers with job search strategies. So in addition to working with the businesses, I also handle working with uh, those who are seeking jobs and need some extra help with that. Um, so I'm happy again to connect them with uh, resources that could aid them in the whole job search process. Uh, certainly providing programming and one-on-one -on -one appointments, and I'll talk about that in some more depth uh, in the upcoming slides here. And overall, just really devoting myself to involvement in the Barrington area business community. Uh, so essentially, as a business librarian, business liaison librarian, uh, I wind up working in what's uh, called that aspect of embedded librarianship, uh, essentially meaning that uh, some of my work happens at our actual library library, whereas uh, a good amount of it also happens beyond our library as well. So I see my position as being split a little bit half and half. Uh, sometimes I'm working, as I mentioned, in the public library, uh, manning our different service points, dealing with um, programs and one-on-one -on -one appointments, but also the other half of my work um, is really out in the community and working with different community groups, again, on behalf of the library to teach them about the resources we have uh, for businesses and job seekers. Uh, so in speaking about that uh, active role in the community, this is just a, a glimpse of some of the groups that I work with on a fairly regular basis. Uh, so one uh, key advantage, I think, is certainly partnering with your local uh, Chamber of Commerce. If you have one nearby, certainly uh, develop a relationship with them if you haven't already. But for me, uh, we do have the Barrington Area Chamber of Commerce here. And as far as the chambers go, it is a very nice thriving chamber. There are lots of networking groups within it and lots of events that are beneficial for me to attend and constantly talk up the library resources. And again, I just be be the face of the library um, for those uh, individuals who are active in the chamber. Uh, so within the actual Barrington Area Chamber of Commerce, uh, some of the, the key events that I find most helpful for me to attend um, are the new member boot camps. Uh, and again, certainly other chambers out there might do something similar. But for us, we do about once every other month, uh, they'll wind up doing a uh, essentially an information session or workshop for those who had just joined the chamber. Um, so really uh, having those new members start to talk to one another and develop relationships early on as new members and um, also introduce them to some longstanding members within the chamber as well. Uh, so that's one I'll attend pretty often uh, since I'm not necessarily promoting a business, but really more objectively promoting the library and how, again, we can help. Uh, the Networking Scramble is another really fun event that the Chamber does. Uh, about twice a year, uh, they'll put together, a again, a large-scale event where the goal is networking. And uh, the way they do it is it's a three-course meal. You'll sit at different uh, three different tables, rather, with a mix of different people uh, for, I guess, your, your salad, your, your entree, and your dessert. Uh, but the goal there is to go through and uh, meet uh, as many individuals as you can and discuss uh, the topics of discussion. Uh, there, there are table moderators typically and they'll pose some questions to the group and everyone will essentially have some time to share what's called their elevator speech, just an introduction about kind of who you are, what you do, what your business is, and then address the discussion question at hand. Um, so if you don't happen to have something like this happening, it's an event that I would think is fairly um, easy to, uh, to modify and put on in another capacity. Uh, and certainly that format uh, can 
can be switched around, uh, not so much uh, over a meal, but um, over another type of event as well. So really the goal is discussion and networking. And uh, another thing that our chamber will do pretty often is ribbon cuttings. So when a brick and mortar business tends to join the chamber, and this is pretty popular, especially with retails, uh, retail businesses. Uh, but when they do join the chamber, the chamber will host a ribbon cutting ceremony for them. Uh, and typically chamber members, as many as possible, are encouraged to attend that to meet the new business uh, or new, and the, the business owners and staff, make them feel welcome. Uh, and they'll, pose, uh, they'll, they'll post about uh, the ribbon cutting on their different social media outlets. It'll get into our, our local papers. Um, so here we have like the Daily Herald business ledger and uh, towards the end of that uh, newspaper, they have a section for chamber news uh, and you'll be able to, um, to see shots from that event as well. Uh, now within the chamber, there are, as I mentioned, several networking groups and uh, these are some of the ones that I will work with uh, but one that was fairly uh, fairly new to me actually I just joined it in the past few months is the Barrington Area Resource Network and it is essentially a non-compete group uh, meaning that there isn't really overlap in uh, individuals who are part of the group in terms of the, the line of work that they do. So we wouldn't have, for example, like two accountants uh, since they would kind of be at odds with one another looking for referrals. So it is strictly non-compete um, and as a, a resource sharing network. Uh, and another uh, nice committee that I'm a part of is the Women's BizNet Community, and essentially it focuses upon women in businesses, uh, a lot of women who own their own businesses or are of high ranks within their business. Uh, it, this is essentially a group for them, and within this group, um, we have a planning committee, which I'm a part of. I'll typically do, uh, do minutes and suggest uh, different presenters and speakers for the group, and together we'll different we'll plan different uh, presentations and luncheons. Essentially, they're like education sessions for the group. Uh, and of course, um, all the women who are part of this group are welcome to attend. They can bring along guests. And of course, men can also attend too. So uh, we're certainly uh, open to that. Uh, but it's a nice, uh, nice way to, uh, to again, get to know more people within the community and see them fairly regularly since our events are monthly. Uh, we also honor the uh, women leaders in our community as well. Uh, we came up with our own award. It's called the OWL Award, uh, standing for the Outstanding Women Leaders. And uh, this celebrates uh, four different aspects of leadership. Uh, and just off the top of my head, I know we have awards for uh, just devotion to service, education, um, community, and so on. So there are lots of different ways to honor our women and accept uh, nominations for different women who, uh, who, who are deserving of this award. So we'll typically honor four members um, of the chamber and uh, celebrate them uh, with a luncheon as well. And again, hear more about what they do, let them share their story and network with one another. And uh, of course, um, we're, we're a chamber that likes to give back. Uh, and uh, there are many service drives that uh, they do put on. So this is also a nice way to get your organization involved. Uh, and again, kind of do your part and contribute and give back to the community as well. Uh, another really uh, beneficial group is the Village Merchants. Um, so for us, we have a pretty thriving downtown area within the village of Barrington. And for me, uh, being at the library most of the time, I don't get to interact with um, within the actual brick and mortar stores terribly often, uh, unless there's an event happening. But uh, the Village Merchant meetings essentially are just all the different shop owners within our village uh, who meet once a month to talk about what's going on uh, in their businesses. So if someone is having a sale, for example, or has an idea for an event, um, that kind of thing we'll all share. Uh, and different representatives from the village will also be present and they'll talk to us a bit about what's going on in the community, what to expect, um, if there would be any potential disruptions to business, for example, construction, uh, that kind of thing. Uh, so it's, again, a nice way to kind of stay abreast of developments in the area. And with the Village Merchants, uh, that is also something where we'll typically invite along a speaker and also have like an educational or training session that will come out of this as well. Again, just based on what the different Village of Merchants uh, would like more information on or would like to learn more about. 
Uh, so uh, within our library, um, we certainly have our residents within the Barrington area district, but another perk that we offer to businesses who happen to fall into our district is the option for them to have a business library card. Um, so uh, essentially the guidelines for obtaining the business library card is that your business would have to be located within our library district and uh, the individual would have to provide a photo ID and a business lease just prove that they are who they are and that their business does happen to fall into um, our geographic area. And it's, uh, it's basically a shared card for the organization. So um, it's, uh, it's, it wouldn't occur that uh, every single employee would happen to have a business card, uh, but rather it's the one card for the group to share. And what that gives them is the same privileges as an adult library card. And uh, in order to obtain the card, it's an easy process, just as easy as getting a residential card. Um, but they would just have to check in and provide that ID and that business lease and the, the card looks exactly the same as a residence card would. So um, I typically get a lot of questions about what the differences are between the two types of cards and uh, essentially with the uh, the BALs are Barrington Area Library cards. Those are our residential cards and the business cards. Those two have the same rights and privileges. So again, as a, a business card holder, you're essentially getting all the perks that a resident would. And then, of course, we do open up our library resources to um, what's called reciprocal borrowers. So if you belong to another library, but you happen to be using our library um, at the time, we'll still honor your card. Um, it's just that there, there are typically more restrictions placed on it. Um, so if you are someone who does happen to hold a residential card or one of our business cards, what that gives you is access to our our databases, um, both inside the library and outside of it, uh, depending on our subscription policies with that database and if it'll allow us to, uh, to log in from an external location. Uh, certainly you get the opportunity to schedule a one-on-one -on -one appointment with staff members. Uh, you could also book rooms as well. So we book a, up to a week ahead of time and uh, we allow residents or uh, business card holders to check them out for two hours at a time. And of course, uh, you're also welcome to check out any of our physical and digital materials and attend our library programs as well. Uh, it's rare for us to ask for a, uh, a residence card number to attend a program, but sometimes our programs are very high demand um, or we will have like an issue or capacity or like a, a capacity uh, amount and we might require a residential card number but for, for the most part they are open to really anyone uh, anyone to attend uh, and as far as reciprocal borrowers um, here's where some more of the limits start to come into play so if you have a card from elsewhere um, you'd be able to access our databases but it's in-house only so you'd only be able to use them in our library uh, you could also uh, book rooms, but uh, instead of being able to reserve them ahead of time, it's done on a walk-in basis uh, and for an hour at a time, so a little bit less in terms of time. Uh, and you can also check out any of our physical materials at the library. However, um, with digital items, that's where subscriptions start to come into play and things get a little murky. So um, digital materials are unfortunately not able to uh, for checkout for reciprocal card holders at the moment. Uh, and again, you can also attend all library programs unless these um, it happens to be one of those programs that does require a um, card number. Uh, so uh, in terms of looking at our website, and if you want to look for this uh, later on, we tend to centralize our information uh, in different subject areas on our website. And for me, uh, the programs that I host and any information pertinent to uh, what's happening uh, in the business aspect of our library uh, will be able to uh, be accessed under the quick link section under business. Um, so you could click on that and you'll be taken to uh, the business page here for our our library. Uh, so we have this section on our website called Business It's Better in Barrington and this is kind of um, just my little central hub for where information is in terms of how to contact me, if you ever want to make an appointment with me, that sort of thing, uh, and if you want to subscribe to uh, our e-newsletter in relation to business and job searches, uh, that information is there as well in addition to information on cards and the current programs that I am hosting. So you can uh, handle 
handle really any of that information there, register yourself for whatever you need, um, or find, again, the information to contact me should you have any questions or suggestions or anything that you want to, um, to contact me about. Uh, and of course, uh, within our library, we have a pretty broad range of facilities here uh, that are helpful to different individuals in our business community. We renovated back in 2014, um, so our space is relatively uh, still pretty new. And uh, our, some of our facilities, we are constantly adding more equipment to. So um, I'll talk a little bit about some of these here. But uh, in the uh, the upper left hand corner there, um, that is our maker space, and I'll talk to you. About about the equipment as well but we also have a studio room which is where I am at the moment um, so if you're someone who likes to produce um, just creative uh, output such as videos music um, if you work on photography that sort of thing um, we have equipment for that out here uh, for a more casual setting we do have a booth uh, like <laughs> like restaurant booths almost uh, but uh, essentially uh, you can gather up here plug into uh, our monitor there and work on uh, say different collaborative projects that way uh, we do have quite a few rooms that do allow for collaboration so you can see most of them have like that monitor that you can connect to as well we do have more individualized spaces as well so on the bottom left hand corner where that big number three is that is um one of our business cubicles and those are one person rooms so it's literally chair desk uh, and just room for one person so it's a nice way to really like isolate yourself if you need to get a project done that way and really want to focus um, otherwise we have some larger scale spaces as well so we have the, our conference room space uh, and we have our business tech area as well which um, has several of these collaborative rooms uh, and uh, essentially kind of a mini computer lab too with uh, all the databases that are, are necessary um, or that we subscribe to within our, our business uh, section and uh, are displayed on our website on, in that business page. So uh, as promised, I wanted to talk about some of our equipment within our maker space, uh, since we have a lot of people who um, are producing their own uh, just multimedia projects, uh, and some are physical media, some are not. Uh, so we want to be able to give access to uh, the different types of equipment that are popular within our community for those who say operate maybe small businesses from their homes or have online shops sort of uh, via Etsy or eBay, for example, and want to share their work and sell that work that way um, so they can come to the library um, we offer material for them to purchase and certainly the equipment for them to have access to uh, so what you're seeing here is the silhouette or cameo uh, equipment here. So here, uh, this item is used to um, to cut out different patterns on paper. People have used it to make stickers, um, uh, quite a few different options. And uh, on the, the bottom of the slide there, uh, towards the window, uh, that is our heat press, um, which is a new acquisition for us. But uh, essentially, um, our, our thoughts are for having people to uh, to come in and maybe make t-shirt designs, that sort of thing, uh, or um, just any design where they can press uh, whatever they've created onto some sort of material uh, and be able to either wear it or sell it, um, whatever their plans are, they'll have access to the equipment. And it's all very self-guided here. We have like manuals and instructions next to each one of these machines, but if someone needs help, um, we our staff are, are pretty close by, so they can always uh, get help from us or set up appointments if they want to uh, sit down and actually learn uh, the, the process with someone in more depth. Uh, we also have 3D printers, and uh, we, we have three, actually. They are named Ron, Harry, and Hermione, but uh, these have been getting some uh, some use as well. And again, just a lot of creativity has come through these. Patrons are invited to submit designs through our website. Uh, we use uh, Thingiverse uh, in addition to a couple other um, options as well if they want to either print a design that already exists uh, and someone has already made or come up with their own item and have that printed. Uh, and then we'll ultimately charge per gram of filament used. So uh, it's been really fun to see what people have come up with. Uh, we did have one person come up with a prosthetic hand, and that's what you see pictured up there on the, the right hand corner. And uh, in town, we have our local movie theater, the Catlow. So someone designed their own little mini Catlow theater and painted over it uh, to have it look like um, our theater here in town. 
Uh, and then a, a few more things. So um, we do have a laser cutter here. Um, this one has been popular for working um, on wood, but also um, in terms of etching glass. Um, we've done quite a few programs with that. Um, some people have come in and done wedding favors, like little mini shot glasses that say Mr. and Mrs., for example, uh, and have made those in bulk through us. Uh, we also have a carvey, which is essentially a wood cutter, and um, you can see some of the different signs and stamps that people have made um, over the years with, uh, with that equipment as well. So um, when I typically promote my services in the library to different groups, um, I always try to include some information about uh, how they can uh, refer me or what a good referral for me would be. Um, I'm sort of in this funny spot where, again, I'm in the library setting. I, I don't work in a business that essentially is looking for a profit, but rather um, I'm just looking to, again, connect people to us as a resource for them. Uh, and on the other side, um, I do want to maintain the library as being objective ground, so not supporting one business over another necessarily, but again, uh, remaining objective and lending support equally uh, across the community. But uh, when I do speak about uh, potential referrals for me, essentially what I tell people is that I'm always looking for anyone who is new to the area or happens to work for a business in town. Um, and they can either be a business owner or someone looking for a job or someone already employed in the area. Uh, another uh, aspect is someone who is looking to do market research or perhaps legal research on their industry. We have lots of great databases for that um, that people just sometimes Aren't, are not aware of and are genuinely surprised to learn about. Uh, or if it's someone who's wanting to expand their skills on uh, different types of software or equipment, um, I'm happy to, um, to work with them on that. Um, or if you're also someone who's just, uh, just a lifelong learner and interested in continuing your education about a wide range of business topics or other topics, um, that's where our library can come into play as well as a great resource. So as far as some of the resources that I use um, to just stay informed on my end, certainly a lot of good news comes out of the Barrington Area Chamber of Commerce for me. Uh, but here, uh, in a more local sense, um, out by me, uh, within the Chicagoland area, we have a group called BIG, um, which stands for the Business Interest Group, and we meet once, about every four months, so once a season, and um, essentially it's a gathering of other business liaison librarians or other um, adult services librarians who happen to focus on business or job seeker work, and we'll all meet with one another. Um, there's typically a presenter who will come in and educate us about a certain topic that we um, deem uh, something that is important uh, to us, something that we would like to learn more about. And uh, in case we are not uh, meeting and a question does come up, we also have a Google group where we can constantly interact with one another, um, post questions, ask for speaker recommendations, that kind of thing. Um, so we'll always be uh, kind of in touch with one another. And that has been a phenomenal resource for me, just uh, hearing about how other libraries are handling certain programs uh, and to uh, get inspiration for other ideas that I might want to execute as well as I'm um, sure my own ideas. There are certainly um, some great listservs out there. Um, for me, the one that I, I tend to use most often is the BizLib listserv. Um, so there, there's typically postings uh, there that come up that are beneficial. Um, a lot of the postings tend to be academic, but um, some of that, uh, some of those questions transfer over to my work pretty well as, uh, uh, as a great resource for me. Uh, the local small business administration is also a great resource. Um, I'm typically in touch with uh, the gentleman who runs that um, out here, and he'll come and present at our library. Uh, so that tends to be a nice resource. And in addition to that, uh, there are local small business development centers within our area, too, who put on different events and seminars, webinars, that kind of thing. Uh, and SCORE uh, out here, um, SCORE is a group that uh, is based in the downtown Chicago area, but they have chapters really throughout the suburbs and certainly one out here in Barrington. Uh, but they are a group uh, that is comprised of retired uh, business executives and professionals with, again, a pretty broad range of experience in the business community. And uh, they now offer one-on-one uh, -on -one mentoring to small business owners or people in small business uh, in the area. And it's entirely a free service. So we'll have them come in and present for us uh, and also come and do one-on-one uh, -on -one mentoring with different people uh, in the small business community out here. 
Uh, for us too, we also have one more group, uh, the Community Career Center. And uh, that is a group that tends to focus more on people who are looking for jobs. So they'll do like resume critiques, cover letter critiques, in addition to lots of different workshops about uh, say how the interview process works, kind of refreshing people's memory on that, uh, making sure that again, their resume, how they're presenting themselves is all up to date and uh, looks good on paper uh, and just uh, acts as a great resource for them and picking up new skills as well. Uh, and within the past two years, um, I've also been attending the Midwest Business Librarian Summit as well, which has been a great way for me to network uh, with people outside of public libraries and connect more with academic librarians, um, certainly other public librarians, but also people in special libraries as well um, that are all handling working with businesses in, in different ways. Um, so it's really interesting to see uh, where our similarities and differences are and how we could all help one another within these roles. Uh, so as far as our library services go, um, I did mention that um, I do host uh, large group programs as well. And again, it's a pretty wide, wide range of topics. Um, I'll typically uh, Typically, I'll, I'll make my decisions for what sort of a program I'll want uh, based upon program survey feedback to really inform uh, future programs. So these are typically programs that have been requested by uh, the attendees to my past programs. So um, you'll see it's a pretty uh, varied range. But again, all these tip, uh, all these topics hearken to either business or job seeking uh, in some way. And then um, the SCORE mentoring sessions, um, actually having SCORE come into the library for a set amount of time to meet with uh, different people who want uh, advice and mentoring about their small business. Uh, that's something new for us that will be starting off in December. So um, SCORE will essentially get a block of three hours and we'll be able to meet with people within that time. And um, the individuals will be able to sign up for their sessions through the website. Uh, and again, all of that will be done in advance. Um, so that's something that I'm looking forward to, um, to having uh, at our library soon. Uh, and another series that I do, so in addition to the business programs, is uh, one that I came with uh, came up with called I Wish I'd Learned That. Uh, and essentially the goal here is to be able to um, offer programs on certain skills, um, uh, tips and tricks, or just uh, suggestions for um, uh, essentially uh, continued education on a variety of topics here, uh, geared toward young adults here. So um, the topics, again, have been pretty varied and, again, have been informed by past uh, program surveys. Uh, so that is something that we'll do um, usually once a month. Um, our schedule is a little sporadic right now with some renovation work being done out here. Uh, but uh, nonetheless, that's another series that we offer. And um, I've mentioned the one-on-one -on -one appointments too. Uh, so um, here, almost all of our full-time librarians are able to meet with people on a one-on-one -on -one basis. And what that gives you is an hour with uh, a librarian who has some sort of a specialty area and will allow you to have, again, that customized uh, kind of information or training with that person. So for me, uh, it's typically business and career help, questions about social media, job search resources, uh, really anything uh, in relation to that. And then whenever possible, if I do get contacted by an outside group for um, for me to do a presentation about the library and the resources, if possible, I'll always um, suggest that um, we actually have the meeting here. Again, if space allows and if uh, our schedule allows, it's not always possible. But if it is, um, I usually like to do that just because it's nicer to get people on site and let them actually see the facilities, uh, actually interact with the resources and give them a nice tour uh, at the end as well. Uh, and of course, um, I'll talk briefly about some of the business and job search databases that we have. Uh, but within our databases here, um, this is our, our full listing for the, the business and job search ones that we have. And I wanted to highlight just a few with you here. But Reference USA, I'm sure this probably looks familiar to some of you here. Uh, this one is probably the most popular one on my end. Um, just when I do get people who are looking to come up with like a marketing list or just look up businesses in the area, different industries in the area. Uh, this tends to be a really nice tool for them. 
And uh, the other one is emergent intellect. So this is just a snapshot of our screen here. Uh, this one is pretty comparable to uh, Reference USA, but it does have some more options that Reference USA doesn't. Uh, so um, if I have someone who's typically more interested in like statistical numerical information, I tend to kind of push them more towards emergent intellect since I think that tends to do a nicer job of it, whereas Reference USA uh, is uh, it's it's a little better um, as, as a directory, kind of teaching you about who does what with the business, uh, giving you a nice profile of what the business is, whereas Mergent will kind of um, veer into other aspects of the business. Uh, for my job seekers, though, um, one of our key databases is called the Careers College, and this one does a, a really nice job of just laying out different tutorials um, and uh, modules that people can work through that really take them through the whole job search process from uh, just uh, kind of reflecting upon yourself, creating that resume, looking at templates, uh, to the whole interview process, what to ask during the interview, follow-up questions, um, so on, um, and on to advice. Um, on, on starting a new position, for example. So that tends to be a really nice one as well. And uh, if I do have people who um, are typically uh, wanting to learn about a new type of software, maybe refresh their memory on a certain skill, um, I'm sure lynda.com probably looks familiar to many of you as well, but they do a really nice job of uh, different tech tutorials. And again, they're very digestible tutorials, uh, brief videos uh, that people can work through at their own pace, can pick up from wherever they need to as well uh, and progress through different uh, kind of training modules this way. And uh, our alternate to uh, Linda is Gale Courses. Um, so similar to Linda in that it does cover a lot of technology, but different in that it covers more than just technology and it is a more formal online course. So this is a full on six week class. Um, it has a professor, it has a syllabus uh, and uh, there are some more deadlines whereas Linda is entirely at your own pace. Uh, and I wanted to talk a bit about the different large scale events that I put on. So in addition to the different programs and one on ones, um, there are usually uh, larger events that I'll, I'll start to focus on uh, different points of the year uh, and uh, really for a variety of reasons. And uh, the first one I'll talk to you a bit about uh, was born out of a need to target home based businesses. Uh, so for me, I found that it's always been harder for me to access home based businesses since with uh, brick and mortar locations it's pretty easy for me to go and introduce myself to a shop owner um, or to again get their contact information online but not every home-based business owner uh, has their information out there and certainly uh, their brick and mortar isn't terribly public um, I wouldn't be comfortable with going up to their home and uh, introducing myself so uh, it has been harder for me to access and I've tried different uh, marketing campaigns in the past um, with uh, emailing going through snail mail mail uh, and different outlets, but um, I started to look at um, the different creative output that was happening with our community and certainly within our own maker lab spaces as well. And uh, I had a program at one point uh, that was geared towards what's called a solopreneur, so um, a one person business. And a lot of these individuals were creating their own multimedia output. Uh, so uh, when I was researching this uh, and seeing what other types of creative output were, were coming from our community, I found that there are a lot of podcasters, a lot of bloggers out there, um, certainly with our Maker Lab space, a lot of people selling on Etsy. Uh, and over time, just our regular library users um, always tended to uh, exhibit an enthusiasm for certain projects that they were working on, and they were very present during some of our other um, large scale events. So um, if they had presented at our, or if they had a booth at our Comic Con in the past, or um, were Maker Lab users, or even past program presenters, I tended to draw from them um, to inform coming up with um, some sort of an event that would highlight this um, output happening in our community. So um, after discussing this um, with my manager and developing some sort of an application for these uh, individuals to, uh, to undergo and coming up with an, a maximum too of how many people we could take into this event, um, we decided to seek out our local podcasters, bloggers, YouTubers, so on, and come up with essentially a media fair that would showcase their work. 
And um, I'm just going to kind of briefly breeze through some of the uh, the different steps here. But this is the uh, promotional blurb that went into our library newsletter, hoping to catch their interest uh, in putting on our first library media fair. And the intent was here uh, that uh, not only could people showcase their work, but people who wanted to learn more about going into this type of work and creating their own YouTube videos, for example, or podcasts, they could learn from people who are already local in the community and had had some success with that. Um, so so it's kind of a two part process here, um, getting the people for the booths and then uh, finally getting an audience to attend. So um, this was the step two was our call for participants. Uh, so when, one got, when it got a little closer to the date, we started to advertise to an audience as well. And then uh, we also had an application form that was um, pretty easy to, to get together. This one was done through SurveyMonkey. So just ask the basic information, what type of media they work with, uh, and some basic information about the media that they were, uh, were working with. Uh, and once we did uh, wind up hitting our deadline uh, for applications, we went through, we reviewed the applications and selected uh, the different ones that we wanted to proceed with and actually have at our library media fair. And so um, you'll get the slides for this certainly, but um, this was our sample letter that did go out to people who were accepted and approved for participating in this uh, and some follow up information about some extra tasks that I needed them to do. And so we came up with our seating chart as well, and this is something that uh, we were pretty flexible with um, as uh, as different people uh, say uh, could no longer do the fair or in certain cases we had some people who applied later and were really, really wanting to do this. Um, so this is kind of roughly what it wound up looking like as in terms of our setup. Uh, and then overall, just kind of recapping the event once it happened, um, we did wind up going with 18 different uh, people who actually had booths or tables at our fair and a total of 115 attendees who did come through the room. They milled through. They had their chance to uh, interact with these individuals, ask questions. Uh, in some cases, um, people were selling items uh, that they made as well so they could purchase products and exchange information, get freebies, that sort of thing. Uh, and just in terms of the breakdown, if you are curious, um, of that group of uh, people, so I think I said it was 18, um, so we had seven podcasters, um, we had three bloggers, two ebook authors, uh, three that were kind of miscellaneous, um, so we had like a game developer, an Etsy shop owner, someone who produced videos, and then someone who specified uh, that they wanted to, um, to present about online gaming for YouTube. Uh, and uh, we also promoted the library's own resources as well. So um, our digital services department also had a table. So they promoted the studio and some of the equipment um, that could be beneficial to people who are looking to create online content, uh, as well as our local history and genealogy people as well, since they had just uh, debuted a website for local history and genealogy, and they wanted to show off those resources as well. And so we are actually hosting our second iteration of the media fair this November. Um, we're changing the date to increase attendance since uh, Chicago. Um, we had a lot of different games and sports events that were happening on the day we initially held it. So there were kind of uh, just ebbs and flows in attendance. So we're hoping that uh, things are better uh, on a different day. Uh, and we're definitely uh, switching up the layout to increase visibility of the different booths. Uh, and uh, we're entertaining the idea of a panel discussion as well. Um, just to add an extra little something to the event. Uh, so um, that is our ad as it stands right now. If you'd like to take a look at it, um, and um, maybe if you want to put one on, you could see what we came up with and see um, what might work for you and what, uh, what might not. And uh, the other event that I wanted to mention, too, is a breakfast for home-based businesses. So. Um, even though the media fair was, again, something that was initially intended for uh, me to work with home-based businesses, um, I wanted to make it even more specific uh, to home-based businesses by actually putting together an event that was advertised as a breakfast for home-based businesses. Um, so it, it had that same goal of getting those people who work at home to actually come to the library and learn about our resources. Um, but this one was more for people who were not online content creators. So if you were a home-based business owner, but say you didn't do a YouTube channel or a blog or any of that stuff. Um, this one was more of a, a presentation and a tour that happened to also have breakfast. So it was me presenting about the library resources and databases, 
facilities, services, and just really um, allowing uh, myself to get to know these people and also letting these other home-based business owners get to know one another since uh, working at home can get pretty isolating and it was nice to see them interact with one another and build relationships um, within the library as well. And certainly um, to always um, get their opinions and uh, offer evaluations so that I can uh, know what programming uh, might be effective for them. Uh, we have a couple of different works in progress too. Uh, currently, my big one is um, our teen job fair. Um, so this is something that we have not done before, but uh, it's something that I'll be doing in collaboration with our teen department. Um, since I already have connections with, um, like I mentioned, the village merchants, um, different shopping districts in town, uh, the chamber, and uh, our goal is to just gauge business interest and, uh, and see which businesses would like to participate at this point. Uh, and depending on how that goes, we'll see kind of how we want to proceed with marketing the event to teens and partnering um, with the different high schools in the area. Uh, so um, again, uh, you'll, you'll receive these, but um, I always include some evaluation and reflection questions at the end of any large uh, scale event or smaller program that I do host, um, just to again, get a feel for um, what tends to work for people, what people want to see more of, and uh, what, what does not. And uh, overall, in terms of keeping in touch, uh, the library, um, we do still have a physical newsletter that we publish um, once a season, and it does have a digital iteration as well. So this is something people could also download, uh, download through our website. Uh, and I mentioned too, um, we have uh, the business uh, website, uh, or the business page rather, on our library website, and uh, the newsletter that also showcases um, the different business programs coming up and different uh, business books that uh, were purchased and being highlighted in the newsletter. So that's also a nice way to, to hear from me and to um, see what's new in our collection and what's coming up in terms of our programming. And um, this is actually my last slide for you. And of course, some um, people are also uh, absolutely welcome to contact me directly um, at work. Um, you can also text the library and uh, your question will go to where it needs to go. Um, or again, alternatively, you can um, either uh, call me or email me out here and I'll be happy to um, to work with you and answer any questions you might have. Um, or if you're a patron, again, uh, meet with you and connect you to any resources that will be helpful to you uh, along the way. Um, so with that being said, I thank you so much for, um, for listening to my presentation and I'm certainly happy to answer any questions okay, that you well, may have you had along the that. way. So we do have a question or two already in and I will read you that first one and then anyone who may have questions as I go, uh, go ahead and start typing those in now. Um, the first question has to do with the business cards and uh -huh. if if all employees at the business are eligible to sure. use it, who is ultimately responsible if they do check out materials for things like fines or lost or damaged items? How does that work? So typically it tends to be the business owner who will come in and actually have the card made. Um, I did mention, yeah, it is a shared card. Um, so it, it can be used by anyone in the business. Um, but if say you do like a, a crew of fine or something, um, if you are the person who accrued it and you, you're not the person who created the card, you're certainly welcome to pay your fine. Uh, that'd be a nice thing to do. But ultimately, yeah, if something does happen and say no one's coming around and paying the fine, um, that would would uh, would move on to the person who actually opened okay, the card, and that's okay. typically yep, the we owner. Thank you from that person. And I, and I guess as a follow up to that, I mean, how long have you been doing these business cards, and do you know whether through actual looking at the catalog records or just through your anecdotal, mm -hmm. are they actually physically checking stuff out, or are they mostly just using the electronic resources and the the space? Um, so really, um, the, the spaces tend to be very popular and that, that usually is what leads to people actually creating the business card because they want to be able to reserve like a nice conference room ahead of time instead of dealing with the whole walk-in thing and the, the shorter time limit. So um, that usually leads to people signing up for it. Um, 
we will have the different databases too uh, that people might want to sign up for different library cards for as well. But uh, certainly people do check out physical materials too. So although I'd say that the rooms themselves are probably the most popular thing for the actual business card holders, um, they, they will typically check out some physical items too. And you know, I don't happen to have statistics or anything on that, unfortunately, at the moment. Um, our circulation uh, group would certainly know and be able to offer that but they'll have like the full directory of how many businesses have Great. cards and uh, statistics on that? what they've checked out and uh, that kind of thing. Yeah, gosh. Um, so it's certainly something that we've been doing um, before I got here. I want to say uh, for at least maybe four or five years now. So are there any other roughly, questions yeah. from the audience? People want to go ahead and type in. And also let me know if you guys have got this contact info down and I can go to the the last pod in the webinar that has your LEU certificate and all the stuff I'm sure most of you are really interested in. <laughs> Well, I'm seeing no t no mad typing, so I'm at least going to switch us over here. So, as you all can see, we've got the PDF for the uh, LEU certificate up here in the top pod, um, and my contact info for anyone who has questions for me after today. Um, I want to thank. Uh, uh, I want to thank everyone for coming. I want to thank Annette Bochnik again for presenting. Um, and we've got a few minutes left if there are any last questions. But if not, I want to hope, I wish everyone a, a happy Tuesday.